Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. With a tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Well, it's Monday, October the 14th, 2019, and this is Clyde J. Kell, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, and once again, two beautiful ladies are here online to keep me company. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Hello. everyone. Hey, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody had a uh, productive week. And, oh, did I say what episode? This is episode 17, right? Yeah, I always forget things. <laughs> the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 17 for October 14, 2019. Okay, the theme for this week was really kind of strange. Um, I got into a little bit of an argument. Well, I wouldn't say argument, but a discussion online with some folks that were uh, putting out some negative vibes and some negative comments about artists and what artists selling, selling online and internet marketing for artists. And uh, this, uh, this fellow was more from a uh, traditional background, you know, he, that he'd been, had been an artist for 40 some years going up through the galleries and everything. So that kind of prompted me to, you know, we're going to, if you put yourself out there on the internet, you are going to receive negative comments and criticism. If it's not about your art, it may be about you because let's face it, folks. Uh, there's a bit of a, a lot of jealousy, uh, in the artist community, we shouldn't be that way, but there is quite a bit of it. And, uh, that's why one of the recommended videos was from Sergio Gomez, where he talks about that and everything. Uh, Diane and Constance, you, you guys get a chance to watch that video and listen to it. Yes, I yeah, did. I did. Okay. Wanna, you want to add anything? Like, um, well, he talked about, you know, dealing with critics and, I mean, every, everybody has, you know, an option to give their opinion, and that's really all it is. Um, it's up to you whether you want to take the opinion of the, someone else or, you know, everything you got to do, like, a, with a grain of salt, they say. You know, just, you know, sometimes it applies, sometimes it doesn't. They don't know all your circumstances. You don't know all of their circumstances. You know, maybe somebody's having a bad day or something, and they they have to take it out on somebody, so they just pick somebody on the internet to do it to. But I mean, you don't really know. 
and it is just someone's opinion. So, you know, it's not like, like make that like at the end of the world, or like it's it it yeah. should yeah. it shouldn't determine your life, but it it does. No, and his opinion is liable to change in a few years. You know, um, you never know. Opinions have a way of well, changing. Yeah, and the uh, the whole um, market and everything has changed so much over the last few years, especially since the internet has come out. I mean, it. I mean, years ago, traditionally the only really way you had to sell your work was through galleries and, you know, openings. And I mean, you uh, sure people like that, you knew that you come across would know you that maybe would buy stuff from you. But for the most part, you had to get into a gallery in order to be able to sell your work. There wasn't any way of contacting people and <laughs> finding them online and, you know, all the stuff there is today. And some people, you know, haven't like, really taken on the new um technology of of marketing themselves online so they don't really understand it yeah. and it's kind of they feel like it's opposed to what you know tr the traditional way of doing things is but it's just a different an additional um way of being able to do it and dare i say it because you know i'm mr positivity i don't like to, to put out negative advice but dare i say it uh those people who stay with the more traditional, they are a bit of, of elitist. They, I think they have an elitist attitude. They like that, that uh, exclusivity. They like being the uh, gatekeepers or participating with the gatekeepers. And uh, it, it's just not that way anymore. You know, that's why I always say it's a great time for artists. Uh, yeah, Costas, you want to add? Some? Yeah, well, you know, if it's something that has worked for him for all this time, and it has worked for a lot of artists all this time, I mean, why should they change? Um, you know, if he's been a like a lot of artists painting for forty years, fifty years, and they've been in galleries showing their work for all that time, and that's their way of showing and selling their work, and it's working for them. There's but no reason to change. Is it? You know, until something happens and they need to change, then there's no need for them to change. You know, and that, but up and coming artists who like the internet and like to do things differently, they, they know how the internet works. They know how social media works. They want to do things differently. They don't want to pay the galleries the 50% or better markup that they have to pay. Um, because it is becoming more expensive all the time to show through galleries. Um, if you don't have the clientele that come with you when you go to a gallery, that a lot of galleries insist on you having to begin with when you go there. Um, it's, it's a big, a big thing to be in a gallery sometimes now. A lot of galleries want you to have your own clientele when you go to them now. Um, so, yeah, which, which makes it really hard for somebody that's just emerging and they don't have that. Right. So I mean, it's not like it, it used to be a long time ago when you went to a gallery, the gallery worked really hard for you as opposed to you working hard for the gallery. And so that's different, you know, um, well, I think it gets back to when I made a, uh, made the, the, you know, the comment and elitist exclusivity type mentality and the, uh, not all, but there's, I've encountered, I have personally encountered this quite a few artists that in my opinion are just nasty. Uh, they have an attitude of, uh, they want to keep their little, their territory and they don't want to share and I maybe I get off this kick because I don't want to get cause, you know we're, we're trying you know we're supposed to keep this very positive and I don't want to get that too negative but let's just say that there are 
are we're well, not all artists are like that oh no, a lot of artists are teachers and they like to teach and they like to share their information and knowledge exactly some people just don't aren't like that some people are not sharers don't want to teach they just want to paint and sell there's just different all different <laughs> kinds of artists out there you know and and some people are just not like that you know yeah so well, the thing is, too, there's all different kinds of not only just artists, but there's also all different kinds of collectors. Like, you know, somebody that likes my art might not like your art, and that's fine. I mean, we're not going to be like identical artists. Nobody's, you know, there's not identical artists everywhere. That you know, we're all selling the exact same thing, and we're in right. competition with not one another. We're not. We really aren't because people no. are going to gravitate towards more towards one type of art than another, and for some right. reason. I mean, I know myself when I go in a gallery or, or the museum or something, certain paintings speak to me and other ones I could care less about. It's just, right. you know. And just between the three of us, our art is so different. Yeah. It's just, yeah. But you know, just miles Diane, differently. Diane hit, hit the, the old expression, hit the nail on the, on the head. Right. That's the whole, that's the whole point. It's not competition. Too many of these uh, artists uh, feel like it is. Bill, yeah, and I think it's common. And it's really, it's really not because mm -mm. if you're creating the art that you're, if you're doing your job, the art is about is reflects your own personality and your own thoughts and and opinions, and it's you. And therefore, you are different from the next person, and vice versa, and everything. And uh, you're, you're like last episode of our podcast, we talked about our niche market. Then you will appeal to that certain niche and that certain collector, and everything. So it's not competition at all, you know. And uh, mm -mm. yeah, but even even within a niche, there's. I mean, I've been. Yeah, you know, I do a lot of plain air painting. And I've been at locations where we're all sort of standing almost, you know, side by side, not totally, you know, real close, but we're basically painting the same scene. And every one of us see it differently. All our paintings yeah. come out totally different, different colors, different viewpoint, just, you know, our own interpretation yeah. of what it is that's in front of us. So it's, yeah. And that, you know, one person's thing is going to, um, painting is going to appeal to somebody and, they might not like the person that's standing right next to you, what they did with it. It's, it's just the way it is, you know, Yeah, your palette really can be completely different. You know, the palette colors that you use are completely different. Yeah, and your the style. Brush strokes there. I mean, one person could be using a palette knife instead of a brush, a brush. I mean, and the choice of colors, uh, it's just, everybody's style is different and that's what makes the world go round. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that, well, and that, that leads, that kind of seg segues into uh, something that uh, I've always said before, and I'll, I'll say it again. Um, if you're new, especially for some of our older generation artists who are get who are just venturing out onto the internet, um, Whatever you say or do, what you post, as they say, you write, not just social media, but in other places on the internet, it, because of the nature of the internet, the way that it is, the computers are interlinked together, they make what is called logs. In other words, they keep, so whatever you write or put out there is, is there permanently. So if you do get into a discussion or an argument with somebody, you know, uh, please keep it positive because 15 years later, you may be approaching a gallery or a show and these people are going to research and then they come across that really super, super scurrilous, nasty posting that you argument that you had completely forgot about. They say, well, wait a minute. Maybe we don't want this guy after all or this lady because it looks like that's a little bit different side of their personality that they're not presenting because employers and future 
mates, you know, we all research each other on the internet now because so much of our life is, is involving everything. So yeah, I, that's an open book. I, uh, I, I, I learned, I adopt this cause I've been on the internet for internet, using the internet in some way, form or another for a very long time. And I adopted that philosophy years ago that if I don't have enough nerve to stand in front of somebody physically in their face, and say, hey, you suck, then I'm not going to do it on the internet. <laughs> yeah. If I, because too many times people will hide behind a, a, uh, a, a, what they call a username, a fake name, or whatever, and they will say just the, the most nastiest and meanest things and will just degrade somebody because they think that they're anonymous and they're, you know, and they're safe, but they wouldn't dare do that in front of the physically in front of the person. So some people say, yeah, it's liberating, but no, it's not in, in a way. But my point is these, these things are stored, they're kept, and they will pop up later on. So you will get your come up, comeuppance, as they say, later on. So you... Well, it's, yeah, and it's okay to disagree with people. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. But you don't have to be nasty about it. Right. And everybody's entitled to their own opinions. Yeah, and, that's right. Everybody's you know, you just got state them. what you think <laughs> and how you feel and take it or leave it. You know, you don't have to be nasty with people. And like, there are some people I've encountered, like I, my, this individual that I encountered, I think that he was calls he, he fell into this category. Um, just like starting an argument. There are people they get their kicks out. Maybe they don't have a very good life, and and they just you know uh, they just want to try to stir up trouble and get get under somebody's goat. Because I because I, I I I got that impression you know from this guy. Um, you never know. You never know. Gary Vaynerchuk uh, mentions, and you know we listen to him quite a bit, and he mentions that. Uh, the biggest uh, preventive prevention of people putting themselves on the internet, doing their postings, everything is they worry too much about what other people think. And of course, you know, he uses a, you know, vulgar term, which I'm not going to repeat that. You know, he's just the heck with it. He just, uh, he actually enjoys when he gets negative uh, comments about his videos, you know, whatever he said, here's uh, uh here's lazy 23 who hasn't got nothing else to do in his life. And he pops on here. He don't even know me personally. He pops on here and says that I'm a, I'm a fool and I'm, he cusses at me and everything else. And he says, you know what the heck with lazy 23. <laughs> he, he, he's, at least I'm out here, you know, making you know making progress with you know with my life and he says and he also takes an attitude of he doesn't get angry he feels sorry for him because they don't have much of a life he said there's a in fact it inspires him to continue putting his motivational talks out there because maybe he'll uh maybe there's a lot of uh lazy 23s or lazy 28s out there that uh, can use more of uh his discussions um Anybody want to add anything else to this? I think we're about hammering this to death. <laughs> yeah, I think we've said all we need to say. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have. Okay. I also, I think I also recommend, I, I we had watched, I, I think we had watched this before. We'd watched just about all of his videos. Stefan Bauman. He's our, he's our master artist teacher. He's kind of like our adopted teacher. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, um, his video when he saw what was the title? Uh, how how to be a master artist or something? something. What what would you yeah, how, how to become a master artist? What you think about that? You know some of the things that he recommends. Yeah. Well, he was talking about doing um, the same or similar subject multiple times because you really need to um, do that in order to fully explore the um, possibilities of it. And I think that is true to some extent, although I, I'm not one that would sit and do the same thing over and over again. I just don't yeah. like doing that too much. But um, I can see that there's some value in that. I mean, I've been doing like the wave paintings 
but they're not all the same wave. They're all different wave. You know, it's like. Yes, they are different. Cause I, I, at first I thought they were the same when you were showing, you know, a few of them that you've shown, I thought, well, wait a minute, that looks just like the previous one. Well, no, it doesn't. Not when you really look at it. They're, they're different. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm getting value out of doing them from that perspective, that I'm I'm trying different things. I'm using different colors. I'm experimenting. And so I, I guess I can see what he's saying as far as that goes, because I am doing more of that as I go through the series. But I wouldn't want to keep painting like, an apple the same apple over and over and over again you know what i mean yeah i mean i don't know how he really meant it um well if you know is that is that what he was getting at is just leaving the setup there and do it several times or just move it and do it over again and move uh, it around and do it over again lighting basically because because if you notice he always talks about this you know he says it over and over again he says we don't we don't paint things like, and his assignments that he gives. One of these days, I'm going to actually start following some of his, because he always, you know, says what the weekly work assignment is for his, his, because he's, 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 uh, records these, he's, these talks in front of his workshop. So he's got, you know, le mm -hmm. live audience there, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, like aluminum foil and toilet paper and Chinese food and all these simple things, you know, and his, oh. Is, is I don't want to see toilet paper. I don't want to see aluminum foil. You know, I want to see shadows and lights and and uh, so that's where he comes from. He says we don't paint things. So when he's saying well, there is value in that, um, yeah. um, there is value in that of seeing things in in the, in their not non normal circumstances, I guess, and seeing the beauty in just about anything. Trying, you know, trying to make a beautiful painting out of whatever. Something, yeah. Something, something that's ordinary. ugly or like he had tools one time, like, you know. Right. Yeah. Hand tools. Just, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> he picks up some, some things that are weird that like that, that you wouldn't think to paint, like, or think you'd want hanging on your wall. <laughs> In one of his videos, he actually, he was, he took a bottle of water that he had been drinking, you know, and he crushed it. And he says, this is your assignment next week. I want you to paint the bottle. And it's like, everybody's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then, I would have a hard time with that too. It's like, then, well, I found the follow-up, because really? it's hard to find. I found the follow-up follow video where he showed some of his students what they had done. It was remarkable. They had took him, you know, you could tell he's some, he's got some students been with him for a while, you know, and it was just remarkable. They had that crushed bottled water, but the way the shadows were falling that they had captured it just right in the light, you know? And so, you know, and I noticed that he doesn't, some of his students, you know, are really, really good, real realistic, you know, realism all the way and others are are uh, a little bit less or uh, somewhat abstract it's the same philosophy follows is that we don't paint things and he's looking for shadows and and you know he gives the same uh, the same critique to either side and i've always that's what i found interesting with this guy you know it's, uh, well, some of that's valuable even like different um like foil or bot you know plastic or some of the different, I mean, some of that stuff can be really hard to paint. So there is value in, in stretching yourself and trying different things like that. I can remember doing like mylar balloons and even regular balloons and just found objects and just weird stuff. <laughs> I mean, we had to do some of that kind of stuff when I was in college. And yeah. it's just, it would, it would really push you and stretch you and, and um, you know, have you do things that you wouldn't normally pick. So, well, I'm, I'm a value. believer in Steph and Stephen Bauman's uh, teachings because I've applied what he teaches to my own art. And you both have seen, you know, I achieved a whole new level, you know, and, and, uh, it's, it, it just it amazes me. I, said, I look back and said, wow, I did that. And I look back at my stuff I did over a year ago and you all, at some point, you almost can't tell it's the same artist that did that. <laughs> Which is something, another point in one of his videos he talks about, it, he is so embarrassed. He said, if you're not embarrassed of your 
previous art, <laughs> then you're you're not you know you're not making progress. And uh, I'm starting to get to that point because I'm looking at my previous stuff I've got on my site. I'm I'm thinking about taking some of it down. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> It is. <laughs> Hide it in the back of the closet. <laughs> I've got stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's time for this to go in the garage. <laughs> okay. And some of the stuff in boxes. Okay. Uh, any more comments about Stephen Bauman? Nope. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, instead of, we're about ready to end this, this episode, episode 17 for August the, our August. Episode 17 for October the 14th, 2019. This is the Artist Friends Podcast. Let's listen to, we mentioned him before, Gary Vaynerchuk. And listen to some advice from Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we may lose our G rating because Gary Vaynerchuk is famous for his, uh, he calls it New Jersey street language, but uh, salty sailor language. So, he uses the F word quite a bit, so please don't be offended. But listen to the content, the essence of what he's saying. I think you'll find it uh, important. The problem is 98% of people are sitting on 50-50 their whole fucking life, which means they're 0-0. Zero, zero. So when you're 50-50, you get one day. And anything else is you're just fucking sitting and bullshitting. So fucking flip a coin to pick the one and never look back. Anybody out there? I have a big life decision to make. Between two choices. How do I know which way to go? You'll never know what the alternative would have been. You pick one and you never, ever, ever even consider to look back. Do you give any quick piece of advice? What should I do? I don't know which one to pick. Which one should, what should I, I do? do? So what should we do, Gary? What should, I do? what should people do? Until you go through it, you won't know. I always play this out. Let's say when you go to heaven, they can show you what would have happened because that's the only way you'd ever see it. Let's just say. What people don't understand is, oh, so you made the wrong call. You should have went to grad school instead of that opportunity or this company instead of that company. But you'll never believe it. You should have went to VaynerMedia and it was perfect and you rose like a phoenix and you were the head of all sound and everything went great. But then you had to go to Virginia on business and you got hit by a car and you died at 31. That's life. I passed on Uber as an investor twice in the beginning. If I did my normal $25,000, $50,000 check, I would have made $400 million. Which means I might have went to China for a keynote two years ago, which means I could have got hit by a fucking bus. I really believe in that shit. You just don't know. You think you know, but that is not how life works. So, to, to like look at two ideas and think you can practically make a good decision is laughable. Literally flip a coin. Just pick the one that feels better right that second and make it about you. Because usually what kids struggle with is the decision they want to do versus the decision that they think they're supposed to do based on the other voices. You know, I think anybody who's listening right now, if you want to set yourself up for success, ask yourself how much risk you've taken in the first 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years of your life. You're going to figure it out by tasting it. Should I eat this cherry? Will I like it? it? The right strategy is to fucking eat the cherry. Right? Moving is important. Because you can change the course. You can't overthink it up front. Right. Like, you, you just can't. Like, we're always wrong. A lot of people make the wrong decision. You know, no matter what I say to your question right now, and they're scared, they'll continue to be, they won't do, they won't put in the work, or they'll be fearful, or whatever it may be, and they'll lose. I mean, a lot of people lose. Yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people lose. The way to really eliminate fear is by not giving a fuck about anybody's opinion. My losses are mine. I'll deal with them myself. I don't need your two cents. You're losing plenty on your own. If you don't give a fuck about what people think, you can do everything. But the quicker you start, the quicker you do. I, I think people dwell. 
And I think dwelling is the wrong strategy. I don't even respect my losses. I don't even give them the time to teach me anything. I fucking look them in the face and go, fuck you, and I keep going. Think okay. one time for one hour, make a decision, and go. I don't wanna hear you fucking complaining about it every day. And I mean that. Way too many of you dwell on your losses. It's holding you back. Too many people make a decision and then cry about their decision every fucking second. You made a fucking decision, own it, live it, sleep in that bed, shit's over. You lost. Move the fuck on. Literally flip a coin. Guys, the only thing I'm hedging against is regret. That's what you need to be careful of. Regret's scary. Regret. And that's what most people do. They build a life that leads to regret. Nobody old and about to die talks about what they did. They talk about what they didn't do. And you're in the best spot right now. You're in the best spot you'll ever be. Straight up. This is the time to be most soft, thoughtful. But everybody wants you to figure out your life now. Your parents don't have their lives figured out. This is the time to taste and put yourself in good positions. You can do everything wrong for the next 10 years of your life and be young as fuck. And have unlimited time to do anything you want. Thank you, Gary. Now I know which way to go. By the way, it was Tails. The advice that Gary Vaynerchuk gives, you know, sometimes I think some people listen to it and they think, well, it's only for the young. Here I am, I'm 60 years old. How's mm-hmm. this going to for me? It's, it's not just for young people. Everybody, isn't it? Yeah, that is. I mean. You know, until you draw your last breath, don't give up. <laughs> Go down I, fighting. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Exactly. I mean, I until you're bed bound, uh-uh. I you don't give up. Be that old man, if I'm lucky to, and then you can still get on the internet. So why, why give up? Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to be. If I'm lucky to live to my 80s, to uh, sitting around saying, "Boy, I wish I had done that." I w- you know, reg- Oh yeah, regret sucks. You know. <laughs> you know. And- oh my yeah, gosh. That's that's like you know I turned sixty one this last week and uh, hey Gary Vaynerchuk still oh yeah you did that's right happy birthday yeah thank you <laughs> yeah his uh, his his comments still I'll splashed your page <laughs> feel to me yeah <laughs> you want to add anything to that Diane or yeah I mean he's I I, I mean I guess all of us have probably come to crossroads in our lives where we've made decisions. And we wonder if it's the right one you you fret over it and you know you just don't know which way to go but you you come to a point where you just have have to choose and and jump in and do it whatever it is and you can't really regret like not taking the other road I mean it's like he said you won't know you really don't know what would happen if you chose something different absolutely Oh, I know. You know, you know, know moving up here was the it. biggest was the biggest thing I have have done in such a long time, and I feel like I really sabotaged myself by moving up here. But I can't change it. I cannot go back. Um, so I have to make the best of being here, you know, and and figure it out here, and straighten things out here. Yep. You know. So. Well, before we end, uh, you have been working really hard. I know you've got, you've announced it before, so I'm going to give you another opportunity. What is coming up this this next weekend, Constance? What's coming up for you? Wednesday, I will be leaving to go set up Thursday in Oklahoma City. 
and it will be the big weekend for the Affair of the Hearts, and I will be in booth 617, so come and see me. <laughs> I have jewelry for sale. Is that the fairground? Yeah. What's the building? That- yeah, it's the Bennett Building at the fairgrounds in Oklahoma City, so come, okay. come, come, come and visit me. Yes, because I know we have some local listeners, so uh, come by and see. Uh, if know. I can squeeze an art piece or two in, I might bring a piece of art. So, <laughs> okay, I'm working on it. <laughs> That's the 18th. The so van is going to be packed. <laughs> it's the 18th, 19th, and 20th. There we go. The entire weekend. This coming. This coming weekend. Yep. La. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a we. We've talked enough. We've beaten the the negativity horse down. Finished up with Gary yeah. to give us a positive shot in the arm, and that's right. We're gonna have make a, the best out of it. Make lemonades out of that stuff. <laughs> we're gonna have a fantastic week. This is Clyde J. Kell, and you've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, Episode Seventeen for October the Fourteenth. 2019 and i've been here with uh, diane hunt and constant bronson and goodbye to everyone thank you for listening bye bye diane and bye bye constance good night all right bye bye folks the artist friends podcast is produced and edited by clyde j kale Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.